So let me ask you this then. Um, what I find very interesting about your argument and very unique is that on the one have, hand, you have environmentalists and a number of people who say that we have very high, un, unsustainably high consumption of energy as a civilization, right? And one of the, the best ways to ensure our future survival, according to that line of reasoning, is to conserve energy uh, and to economize it and to use as little as possible. On the other hand, your argument is that Actually, it's quite the opposite, that actually uh, we are going to accelerate our consumption of energy, but that would happen at, in a context in which energy becomes exponentially cheaper and exponentially more, more available. So how is that possible? I mean, amidst all the claims of, of, of the pessimists who claim that we're running out of resources, running out of energy, etc. Um, well, actually, uh, we can make a comparison to Internet. When we think about Internet uh, 30 years ago, people thought that we could not have access to so much information and so much data that it was impossible and that it would create a collapse of the civilization that we had. And when you look at the situation today, it's just the opposite. We have more and more data, more and more information, and actually it is cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. So the same, I think, is going to happen with energy. We are going to use more and more energy, and it is going to be cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Now, let me put this into, pers into perspective. Why are we going to use so much more energy? And the reason is because uh, humanity will begin the... Um, exploration and colonization of the universe and for that we need lots of energy we need a lot of energy because it is very energy expensive to take humans or to take robots out of our planet into the outer atmosphere and um, that requires uh, incredible amounts of energy but again i repeat we have lots of energy reaching our planet from the sun and we will be able to gather this energy very cheaply in the following uh, two decades and, and how exactly are we going to gather that energy? Uh, or, or, I mean, what, in your opinion, is the energy of the future? You said that you started with the oil and gas industry, and then eventually you moved on to more renewable uh, resources, uh, such as solar uh, being one of them. What is the future energy that our civilization needs to embrace, in your opinion? Well, just as uh, today we have an energy mix, even though it is mostly fossil fuels, because we have, uh, to put it roughly, one third of natural gas, one third of coal, and one third of oil, and then a little bit of other things, including nuclear energy and renewables today. In the future, we will also have a mix, but that mix will be tilted towards solar energy, because solar energy is the elephant, is the big elephant in the house. Um, we also have plenty of wind energy. I mean, really, a lot of a lot of wind energy. In fact, um, if we advanced wind energy enough, we could also power the whole of civilization today just using wind energy. Another good example is geothermal energy. Geothermal energy also has the potential to power civilization today. But um, when we compare those two, which are huge, which are big, you know, they are nothing compared to solar energy. But let me tell you, even though solar energy is incredible and it's so abundant and uh, it's almost unlimited. There is even more. There is so much more energy. If we look about what Einstein and his famous equation, E equals mc squared, you know, this gives us even more energy than solar power. If we can convert a little amount of mass uh, into uh, energy using Einstein's equation, you know, we have incredible amounts of energy. So solar power is not the end of the game. There is more energy if we use, uh, uh, you know, Einstein's equation, conversion of matter into energy, and even more, even more in the future, if we use antimatter into matter. So what do you say? I mean, I remember uh, one of our guest speakers um, during uh, last summer graduate studies program at Singularity University, I think was the chief economist of uh, the chief economist of Exxon Mobil. And uh, Chevron, Chevron Texaco. Oh, Chevron Texaco. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, but again, as an energy expert, you know better than me. Uh, but if I remember, and correct me if I'm wrong, if I remember according to his argument, he did not see or foresee that tilting 
that you were just talking about towards solar and alternative uh, energy sources. And in fact, he claimed in his argument that uh, fossil fuels, oil and gas, would continue to dominate for the next couple of decades. So, mm -hmm. Well, actually, uh, you know, um, I don't believe in peak oil. Many people talk about peak oil, and obviously it will eventually happen, but not in 20 or even 50 years, because we do have plenty of fossil fuels today, and not just coal. We have a lot of um, natural gas, and we have a lot of oil. So if we continued on the, the current path, we still have enough fossil fuels. But I think we are going to change because of environmental considerations as well. You know, the environment is important and we really need to use better energy sources. And if we have solar energy, which is almost unlimited, and that hopefully this year in 2012 will reach grid parity. Grid parity means that solar energy in some markets, obviously, starting in the sunnier countries, will reach the cost of um, electricity produced from coal. Okay, and this will happen this year, 2012, in some sunny markets. This will radically change the industry because it, it is going to be cheaper to use solar energy than to use fossil fuels. And because economics rules the world, you know, uh, people will realize that it is actually cheaper. Not only is it environmentally better, but also it is economically cheaper to use solar energy. And this will continue during the following decades. So I think it, it is an incredible change happening. It is the biggest transition in energy we have seen in the history of the planet. And also let me emphasize that energy is not any industry. Energy is the largest industry in this planet. Energy represents about $8 trillion of business. Eight trillion dollars of business per year. That's a lot of money. And in this transition, we are going to go from old energy into new energy sources. So it's, it's an incredible transition that some people don't realize. Like, let me compare it to Internet or to exponential change in information. Many people don't realize still what is happening in the um, information technologies. Many people didn't think that we would have um, mobile phones for almost the whole planet. Today, 80% of the inhabitants of the planet already has a mobile telephone. This was totally unexpected 20 years ago. It was still unbelievable, even 10 years ago. Well, let me tell you what is going to happen in 10 years, 20 years. You know, I foresee that in 20 years, at least, at least half of the energy used in the planet will come from solar sources. So why is it that, that people in the industry, such as uh, Chevron, Texaco, are failing to see that uh, possibility as a very credible one? And what do you think would happen to them? Uh, I mean, is that a denial or is that simply a disagreement on the facts and the trends happening uh, in the industry right now? Well, because the energy industry is in transition, many things are happening and there is not a clear vision. And also there are big vested interests. You know, companies from the oil, old oil industry have a lot of uh, vested interest and the infrastructure costs are huge. So for them, it is not convenient that this transition is fast. However, some companies are looking this transition even in the oil industry. And let me give you an example. Total, Total which is the big uh, uh, energy company, oil uh, company from France, bought Sun Power, which was the largest Sun Sun Energy Company in the USA in 2011. And why did Total, an oil industry company, buy the largest Sun Power Company in the USA? Well, because they know that this is coming. And probably in 20 years, Sun Power will be bigger than Total, or it will produce more revenue for the old Total that... Um, that um, the, the situation would indicate otherwise. So uh, this is going to happen. Uh, ExxonMobil, again, is also interested in solar energy. Finally, British Petroleum also had some programs in solar energy and hydrogen that unfortunately they abandoned. They had so many problems, uh, BP, that they abandoned the hydrogen program. But these trends will continue. I think they are unstoppable almost because I repeat, not only are they good for the environment, they are cheaper. They are good for business, they are good for the economy. You just mentioned uh, the vested interest that those companies have, but what about uh, other skeptics who uh, point to the fact that 
similar predictions were made, say, in the late 40s and early 1950s about electricity. Um, and some experts said that electricity would become so radically abundant that it would be just too cheap to meter and it would be practically free. Well, looking uh, 60 years down the road where we are today, this uh, has not materialized just yet. So is there not the possibility that those predictions are going to end up the same way? Well, uh, anything could happen, that is uh, for sure. But again, I'm telling you about the trends, what is happening, and I repeat, this year we will reach grid parity with solar energy for the first time in some sunny markets. This is beginning to happen now. You know, 50 years ago, the conditions were different. Actually, you can again compare this to artificial intelligence. Some people talked about artificial intelligence that it should have happened earlier. But why could not happen it earlier? Because we did not have enough computing power as we have today. Uh, in a similar way, you could say also that the solar industry actually is using many of the technologies to produce um, silicon panels uh, for computers. They are using that for producing solar panels. So there is an exponential trend also in solar panels, and they are becoming cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And um, it's beautiful. When you compare the trends in, in the reduction of uh, the cost of solar panels, you can compare that to the uh, computing uh, power uh, just 20, decades, uh, 20 years ago. And what do you think would be the effect of uh, solar power reaching and eventually surpassing parity with oil and gas and other fossil fuel energy sources? on countries such as Venezuela or such as uh, many of the oil producing countries from the Middle Eastern region who are entirely dependent on their GDP and their national revenue on uh, fossil fuels. Do you not think well, that would destabilize the global, uh, uh, the, the world, not only economically, but also politically and, and even militarily, socially? Well. Well, sure. I mean, this is a huge, huge transition. And again, in the largest industry in the world. So this is big. What is happening is big. But uh, for one thing, you know, the countries that right now produce oil basically are, are in sunny places as well. So, for example, some of the North African countries are very much in favor of solar power because they have a lot of sun also. Uh, you could say the same about Venezuela. Venezuela has a lot of sun. And you could say the same about the Middle East and some other uh, uh, oil producing nations, even Indonesia and Nigeria. Uh, a bigger problem would be this, uh, Russia. Russia actually doesn't have that much sun and it has a lot of oil. So the problem might be actually not with the Middle East, North Africa, Venezuela, Nigeria, or Indonesia, but with Russia. What is Russia going to do? Because Russia has a lot of oil, and Russia is one of the uh, top two oil producers in the world. You know, Russia is always competing with Saudi Arabia to see who is number one today. And uh, the situation might be complicated uh, in Russia. But again, in Russia, they also have a lot of technology. And uh, in fact, I'm... Positive. I think they will use this technology to advance solar power even in Russia. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's another fantastic point that you just made about Russia because, as we know, Russia is one of the major nuclear powers in the world, which is at the same time still being run by an authoritarian regime, as we saw during the last election there. Uh, so... That's indeed a, a, a very important thing to keep in mind about the position uh, in Russia. And, and that also raises the stakes about what would happen in Russia, politically speaking. How, would there be a transition to a new government, uh, which is not basically uh, controlled by Putin and his cronies or not? And because that would have potentially global implications, as it does.